Hey guys, welcome to our first conversation uh, about Daniel. And uh, I just wanted to visit with you for a few minutes today as you discuss this material and let you know how important this conversation is to our church. A matter of fact, I just finished a service and I'll be coming back each week recording these videos right after a service. And uh, a gentleman, older gentleman came up to me and said, I've been following the Lord for 50 years. And he said, can I ask you one question? I said, sure. He said, you, you know this isn't just a sermon. You're, you know that, right? You know this is a, a life-altering, church-changing conversation. He said, but how is it that those of us that have been serving God all this time can hear something like this and we don't let it change us. How can that happen? Um, and his question kind of, I didn't know how to answer him and I don't know that I gave him an adequate answer. The question itself, it was an honest question. It wasn't an accusation because he put himself in the category. How can the elders, how can the pastors, how can us seasoned believers hear a sermon like this um, and not recognize it for what it is? Um, and I basically said to him, that's why we're doing it the way we are. We have groups that are taking this, going deeper, studying Larry Osborne's book, uh, Thriving in Babylon, some studying Chris Hodges' book, The Daniel Dilemma, uh, some studying others. And over the next several weeks, I'll be borrowing resources from both Larry and Chris and several others. Tonight, I borrowed heavily from some of Larry's stuff. But the question reverberates in me that he asked. And one of the things that gives me some degree of hope uh, is that there are groups like you that are meeting in various places around the Metroplex, taking this conversation deeper. Because I do believe one of the reasons we chose this topic as the topic to drive our fall is because of the, the, the power, the relevance of the message, but the power of it, if we grasp it, and if it gets seeded into the deep of our hearts, into the depths of our church, um, it, it can change not only people, but it can change a whole body. And so I just, I wanna challenge you um, to, to make these next few moments, dig into it, make them matter, uh, and, and let them change you. One of the things that I was thinking about at the end of my time after I got through preaching, I didn't even say this after this last service, and I may add it into the ones tomorrow, but Proverbs 3, verse 5, we quote it so often, verse 5 and 6, um, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. We, we use those two phrases together at the first of that. We quote that verse, we know it by memory. We quote it so often, we don't stop to think about how far removed trusting in the Lord has to be from our own understanding. Defaulting to our own understanding is the enemy of trusting the Lord. And in this first week, my message is centered on the bedrock, the foundation, the soil that's gonna grow every attribute that we need to be able to live in Babylon, to be able to excel in Babylon. And that is this firm foundation of the sovereignty of God, that God is in control. And you'll hear me say it, you heard me say it in the message, you, you, you gotta talk about what it means in your group um, that, that he is in control, no matter who's in control. I mean, he is behind all things. And when you believe God is behind all things, it changes everything. From that very first line in the opening verses of Daniel that the Lord gave Nebuchadnezzar the victory, that's profound. And that framework is what enabled Daniel to do and be everything he did and all that he was in Babylon, the things that we're gonna talk about in the next few weeks. But don't let it be lost on you, that verse that we quote all the time. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. It's the, the default of human nature to lean on our understanding. And we say we're trusting God, but we question God when he doesn't work in a way that we can understand. We're trying to trust God and lean on our own understanding. And it's not possible. Trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Then he will direct your paths, even in Babylon. 
So let me challenge you in the next few moments, take some time and think through some key statements that when the Lord is behind everything, it changes everything. Think through some key statements that God is in control of who is in control and, and think through how opposite it really is to trust God instead of lean on your understanding and how hard it actually is because it's easy to lip service trust in God while we lean on our own understanding, but you can't do both. When you come to the place that Habakkuk was, uh, that we got to at the end of Habakkuk in chapter three, it doesn't matter if the barns are empty and the olives don't produce fruit and there are no figs on the vine, it doesn't matter. If Babylon comes and all hell breaks loose, God, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna trust you and I'm gonna take joy in the God of my salvation. I don't understand it. I'm not gonna lean on what I understand anymore. I'm gonna trust the goodness and the righteousness and the character of God. And while it doesn't make sense to me right now, it has made sense for generations. And when I look back at Habakkuk's story, I see, okay, aha. Uh -huh. But Habakkuk didn't see what I see. I look back at Daniel's story and I see how Babylon was overthrown and Jerusalem was built and I see how God was faithful to everything he said. But Daniel couldn't see that then. He trusted. There are a lot of things you can't see now, I can't see now. And there are some things that are gonna be even more difficult marching forward in our own Babylon, politically, things that are gonna oppose the church, things that are gonna oppose people of faith. And you gotta make up your mind. I know this is crude, all right? I know what I'm about to say is crude, but you've gotta make up your mind before you get in the situation. I, I, have, I tell my kids, you, you can't wait to make up your mind when you get in the back seat of a car. You gotta make up your mind now to never get in the back seat of a car. You can't wait because you will fail in the moment if you wait until the pressure is on. Make up your mind now. We're gonna see it in the future in our study. The Bible says Daniel resolved in his heart not to defile himself. He made up his mind long before he got to Babylon the kind of person he was gonna be. And I'm challenging you to determine in your heart. You'll never make that resolve in your heart until you trust the sovereign control of God. So it all starts right here and in this conversation. Let it get deep in you and let it change us.